<coughs> good afternoon to all of you uh, 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 professor chidambaram uh, dr fidel castro diaz balars uh, many uh, uh, past presidents of the academy distinguished fellows and the guests uh, i would like to welcome you for the insa public lecture today uh, by uh, dr fidel castro diaz balars uh, on the uh, uh <coughs> theme of crossroads of modern sciences and innovative endeavors with society the cuban perspective uh, i am also very happy to uh, have uh, dr chidambaram among us and uh, uh, without uh, spending too much of time because we have a very tight program in the afternoon i would like to invite uh, dr chidambaram who is a personal friend of mr C dr castro to introduce him uh, 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 and uh, dr uh, chidambaram dr salunke dr fidel castro diaz balart ambassador cuerto distinguished fellows of the academy and see several presidents of the academy here and friends it's indeed a great pleasure to welcome my old friend dr fidel castro diaz balart scientific advisor of the state council of cuba to the academy he is a physicist and his research interests are in nuclear physics energy technologies and their relation with environmental sciences of course his current uh, strong interest is in nano science and advanced uh, technologies and considering the post he now occupies science policies innovation and knowledge knowledge management his education he took uh, got his um, 100 degree in physics from mv lomonosov state university in moscow and then he worked in the joint institute for nuclear research in dubna and uh, phd is from the iv kurchatov atomic energy institute in again in uh, moscow then he has worked uh, in the nuclear power plant there where he did his um, doctoral research in theoretical physics and nuclear power plants based on bvr reactors the type of reactors we have in uh, kudankulam and in 2000 he obtained a doctor of sciences degree from the higher institute of nuclear sciences and technology in havana cuba and holds also a masters master in sciences equal in degree in strategic planning and uh, higher management project management he has occupied many positions he has been executive secretary of the atomic energy commission there 78 to 92 then uh, when i used to go to the international atomic energy agency he was also a, a member of the board of governors uh, he has been chief of scientific and innovation activities in the ministry of industry for a decade 93 to 2003 and from 2004 to the present time he is the scientific advisor of the state council republic of cuba now he has great interest in international collaboration of course he's a great friend of india and uh, he has been the president of the meeting of the coordinating countries for peaceful use of atomic energy non aligned or developing countries he has been in the permanent commission for peaceful uses of atomic energy in comecon countries and i said before a governor in the board of governors of the international atomic energy agency and also headed their delegation to the general assembly now he has attended and uh, led the uh, cuban delegation and uh, as a member as a leader world summit on information society in geneva in 2003 and 5 and then he has headed the organizing committee of the unesco conference on the international meeting of knowledge higher education and science first international seminar on scientific parks which was also supported by the spanish organizations and uh, he has been president of the organizing committee 
number of meetings on on seminar international seminars on nano sciences and technologies written a large number of books uh, one of the ones which i read he gave me a long time back nuclear energy and development i wish he has followed up with another book and then uh, science innovation and the future he won a number of awards um, apart from a degree of doctor of philosophy honoris causa of national academy of science of ukraine and the first great medal of the medical academy and in uh, 2012 honoris causa degree in nuclear physics from havana university of havana now uh, he is uh, participated in many meetings including in cern in geneva and um, as i said he has written many books membership of many international organizations apart from being the vice president of the cuban academy of sciences now we had the pleasure of being together in auckland a couple of weeks back the world meeting of science uh, science advisors which is the first time the chief scientific advisor of the prime minister of new zealand had uh, had organized this meeting along with dr salunke was also there so we had an opportunity of spending uh, some time together so uh, he was kind enough to agree to talk here on the crossroad of modern sciences and innovative endeavors um, in the uh, the context as you can see with um, uh, of the cuban uh, cuban society so we would uh, and there was society the cuban perspective of this interaction with the society may I now request dr fidel castro dias bala to give his talk Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, thank you much Dr. Shambaran for his kind presentation. The Science Academy also for inviting inviting me for this lecture. Having uh, opp the opportunity to present the invited lecture in the in the Academy of Science, I want to convey first of all my gratitude to the Council of the Academy of Science represented here by past presidents, other uh, eminent scientists, and Dr. Salunke, as well as the PCA, Dr. Shiran Baran, for the kind invitation to address this prestigious auditorium. Due to timing uh, things and related with the uh, opportunity of being more clear, I decided to, to present my my conference in a, in a written way. I will focus on three issues. Some of the world society's problems and challenges also present in the field of knowledge and technology, the current spectacular progress of science and technology, and finally, briefly, refer to certain aspects of the development of science and innovation in Cuba. During this, the 20th century, science and technology had a spectacular progress. It was the center of the quantum revolution that led to impressive advances in numer numerous knowledge areas of science and engineering and to an endless number of key inventions. It was also the center of the biomolecular revolution which started from the DNA molecular decoding and from the development of the genetic engineering and biotechnology made possible that in hardly 120 years to identify gra great part of the human ge genome. The third great moment of that century was the informat informatic revolution that with the transistor inventor, it allowed the aftermath development 
of the elect microelectronics, the modern computer, the internet, and the current achievement of the information and communication technology. There were also other discoveries in that century that deserve to be mentioned. The aircraft and nuclear energy development, the beginning of the space exploration, the green revolution, and the precision agriculture, the tectonic plate and continental drift, the theory that since its beginning shocked the earth sciences, the considerable development in complex system studies with remarkable application are the behavior of the atmospheric process, the climate and the diversity um, among biodiversity among others. However, in a century where 90% of the histories, scientists and engineers live it, it won't be possible to mention all the advance made and it will be conceited, trying to range more than the most remarkable moment. Nevertheless, it's incontestable that all above mentioned cert certainly had not only changed thinking, knowledge, and natural understanding, but also had a great impact in industry, economic, and nowadays societies. But in parallel, it should be also noted that advances in science and technology, in parallel with advances in science and technology, they are important environmental and safety issues that raises concerns such as the need of harmonize the economic development with the global warming, the need to confront the pollution of natural resources, the pollution of waters, atmosphere and soil, the loss of biodiversity, the increase of desertification, and the national disaster, among others. On the other side, constitutes irrefutable realities that product of the unequal development and the current existential gap of the million of patents and more than two million of scientific papers published in the world each year, 90%, as you can see there, of the patents and 85% of the publications come from developed countries. And that at the end of 2012, from the 2.4 billion of internet worldwide users. 77% are from n e Europe, North America, and Asia. Besides, an interesting fact, 42% of the top million websites, nearly as much as all the European and Asian countries combined, are hosted in the United States. It is also a fact that in the last few years, the fields where knowledge plays a critical role as electronic computation, software telecommunication, telecommunication, biotechnology, nanotechnology, airspace, high technology for healthcare, new materials, polymers and plastic, pharmaceutical, chemical products, etc., have expanded mainly in the industrialized countries. Regarding education challenges, there are three split ends that should be taken into consideration to the world's development. The eradication of the existing high level of illiteracy that we were just yesterday talking with Dr. Chidan Baran, the, the importance of achieving this goal before trying to become a developed country in, in, in any part of the world. You have to have the due quantity of person with knowledge and with all the skills to, to be part of the excitation of the new high-tech and knowledge revolution that is taking care, is taking, uh, is, ta is currently uh, uh, being uh, seen by everybody. As I said, eradicating the existing high level of illiteracy, the need of promoting high quality universities to obtain the critical mass of scientists and engineers as well as other profiles capable of addressing the new productive high technology system and of increasing the scientific technological general culture of the populations. In relation to the so-called 
brain circulation, in fact, brain drain, as you can see in, the, in this part of the slide. In recent years, of the underdeveloped countries, one three point million out of almost seven million people with high professional level have emigrated. Other challenges that humankind is, is facing. This century will be critical for the future of humanity. In addition to the problem described, other challenges are present. The supply of water, food and en energy so security, the problems of population aging, poverty, public health, the increase of chronic and non-transmissible disease, and the sustainable management of large cities. A problem that I'm sure that in many cities, very large in your country, are being uh, tackled in this moment because uh, they are not easy. All of them are linked to the several global crises that prevail and influence each other as the economic, financial, and population growth. At the same time, the benefits of the scientific and technical advance have not been equally distributed at planetary scale, scale and do not reach the majority of the population. It is predicted that by 2050, there will be 9 billion people in the planet. This will demand radical terms of social justice, political stability, energy, health, and in the most basic of the human rights, the food security right that presently around 900 million of hungry people in the world don't have. Then the first question in arise in this context, can science feed the world? As experts has, have pointed out in different international meetings, to suit this purpose from now on up to the half of the century, as much food as you can see in this graphic, that the, the mankind in, in between 15 and 2010 used 677 extra calories and to feed 9 billion a person in between 10,000, 10 and 10,060, you have to produce little more extra calories as, as in all the time of the, of the past history of the of recent history of the mankind. So that implies an increase of 70% of the current rates of productivity and to incorporate to agriculture a surface corresponding to Brazil, which is obviously not possible. In terms of energy production, there is a consensus that the end of the useful life of fossil fuels is in sight through new discoveries of reserves at the bottom of ocean could take them a while it, if appropriate and viable extraction technology were available. In addition to that, for the industrial energetic, the alternative energy sources that are developing require development in knowledge of some physical process and basic engineering for their, fuel, for their full develop, deployment and up to nuclear fission promise, which a long way to go, is achieved. No renewable energy source by itself or other sources will be able to replace fossil fuels. The solution with implication in a middle term should have an holistic approach that comprehends a combination of all ex existing energy sources and technology and an improvement of the industrial process efficiency. Global health will be also affected in the more populated planet. In addition to the well-known pandemias, a, most fre a more frequent threat will be the new virus, product of recombination between human and animal strains and antibiotic-resistant bacteria, deadly pato pathogens, which in the recent past were confined to small population and can now spread all over the planet in the space of days or weeks. We have present the the, the Ebola uh, that is uh, creating a lot, a lot of problems in worldwide and is, uh, is a state of emergency from the World Health Organization. 
and it's not easy to tackle, mainly in Africa. For the rapid development and deployment of new vaccines, antibiotics, and diagnostic means will be necessary new, te new knowledge, technologies, and therapeutic approaches. Distinguished audience, allow me to show some important consideration about the science progress and its current challenge for this century, for this half, cent half, past, uh, par uh, half part of this century. Since the term of the millennium, major challenges have occurred in science, where as you well know, which is, as you well known, is always powered by curiosity, passion, and fascination. Besides, no, pro no previously imagined dimension of knowledge and technology have been reached before. An essential feature of modern science, as you know, is the connection sy synergy between pure and applied science, the multidisciplinary nature of many cutting-edge science, and the way in which the advance in new fields interact and overlap each other in the so-called enabling technology. An example of that going on currently and will be increasing in the next decade is the so-called nano-bio infocogno convergence, which shows the root link between contemporary science and high technology. Here in nano-bio nano -bio materials, we have some experts here in the different fields, supramolecular chemistry, engineering, computing, genetic engineering, all those for new goods and services, many predicts that will leave present high tech far, far behind. Another issue that always is present is the impact that can have basic science and theoretical research in progress of the economy. This is a discussion that has been going on decades and decades, and is very often uh, or when you are trying to do a, a policy or science for policy, no? <laughs> it's forgotten. And I'm, I refer to the, f let's for example take the case of the response given by Faraday to the then Minister of Finance on the practical use of electricity. He said, when asked, he said, one day, sir, to may tax it. After one century and, and some years, this has become a very crude truth. It's very expensive. Another issue that always present is the impact uh, uh, in the field of physic, physics. A good example is quantum mechanics, which developed rapidly in the decade of the 20s of the last century, away from any application and has led to many discoveries and co application in modern life. It is estimated that only in the U.S. 30% of the GDP are based in invention that have been possible by quantum mechanics, since semiconductors in computer chips up to the laser equipment of DVD imagines, magnetic resonance imagining in hospital mobile telephones and many others. In this, uh, in the, in the same, f in in this respect, uh, some example of the current achievement in the field of physics, with great potential in the near future, are, in the mesoscale, at the end of the 90s, the obtaining of the Bose-Einstein condensate by means of the laser atom has favored the practical use of interwave or correlate photon pairs, and determined the beginning of the quantum cryptography. Also. Graphene discovered in 2004 helped to increase knowledge and horizons of new radical innovation, which came out with the previous Fullerins and Nano 2 findings. In the interval between the Fento scale and the electro weak scale, the domain of the nuclear physics and the elemental particles, the, the 4th of July of 2000. 12, of everybody knows, using the Great uh, Hadron Collider, the scientists in CERN announced the discovery of a new particle, the heat boson, postulated in 1964, and that was issued the Nobel Prize for their authors the past year. 
This element, in addition to complete the so-called standard model of basic part of elemental uh, particles, it could lead to improved practical application in many other fields, such as the currently going on so-called hadron therapy, a novel cancer diagnostic and treatment method that don't damage the cells around it, the affect area. Progress in other key areas of modern biology, chemistry, and mathematics, as well as their interdisciplinary connection applied to the life of the air science, the agriculture, engineering, even the studies related to society, have shown the effect of new ideas and technology on the economic growth. With, the, with regard to the prospect for innovation and application of discoveries that will change the world in the 21st century, a, stu a study of the Technological Institute of Ma Massachusetts, which refers to the 10 key technologies, shows that to maintain and increase competitiveness, attention should be paid to advanced material, mechatronics, so, so far hard for the grid system, the aerospace, armament industry, the vehicle production, the micro and nano electronics, and the human health application, in particle, biotechnology and nanotechnology, to which are dest destined today more than 50% of the world resource in science and technology development. However, as to successful experience in selected developed country, such as India, and Cuba in different terms, geography and, and quantities of t its territory and population, the realization of these potentials depend on a group of policy instruments aimed to convert scientific discovery into goods and services. Dear friend, let me refer br briefly to certain aspects of the development of science and innovation in Cuba, which, in the, which is the last part of my presentation. Since the dawn of the revolution to the present, it's, def has, it's well defined the role of science work and an intellectual should play in the process, as well as the importance of intellectual production for the future of the country. In this regard, after 55 years, After 55 years, with a, with a consistent state support and, and right policy, it has achieved notable success in the field of education and science. As, as you can see here, the, at present in Cuba, is, we have uh, around, uh, from a population of 11.2 million of people, around 2.5 million are in different level of studies. This is considering al also those who work in the industry or work in the services. The ninth grade is compulsive. In this, you know, uh, the concerning university, we have 68 in, s in 100 and 123 sites in all over the country and, and 1.2 million of persons have ac acquired higher education in most that in this f uh, past five decades. Uh, concerning science and innovation, uh, the current GDP expenditure is around 0.6 percent. It used to be 1 percent, but in the last days, in the last years, it had dropped. We have around 190 big s research centers and 87,947 people working in science, from which half a little more than half are 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 women. This this uh, data does do, do, do don't impress it by the quantity. You, know? you have to have the 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 relation between the quantity of of, of citizen and and the large of the country. The doctor in science around three hundred and almost uh, thirteen thousand of PhD and more than around 20,000 and, and uh, the number of scientists and engineers is, 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 is not this, this number is around 14 for per 10,000 in inhabitants. Uh, it also has achieved a, 
a, a proper scientific and technical infrastructure. We see show in this slide the, the, the 20 most important research institutions in Cuba from different parts. Uh, some are from the university, others are from the biotech complex, uh, and so on. Uh, last but not least, the country has also achieved a high level uh, of public health that is well known worldwide and illustrated with the following da data. Six me medical doctors per thousand inhabitants equally distributed through the country, life expectancy 77.9 years, and an infant mortality of less than five per thousand births. I, I should state also that this, as well as education and, and health care is completely free in Cuba. Since the Sixth Party Congress in April 2011 and the consequent approval of these 313 guidelines for economic and social policy development in the, in the framework of its socio-economical model updating, a future space for science and technology is granted and consisted, constitute one of the fundamental factors of economic and social development of Cuba. What role can and should play then science and innovation in building Cuban's future? In a small country, lacking major energy resources and a demographic prone to aging and low birth and low birth rate, it is crucial to sustain and develop basic and natural science, renewable energy sources the production of advanced equipment for healthcare, scientific and technology service, and high added value of high added value, and the assimilation of emerging technology such as nanotechnology. Similarly, in place where existing condition, it is convenient to promote the transformation of research institutes into high tech companies. A good example is the approval merger of the West Havana Scientific Cluster and the pharmaceutical industry into uh, into an enterprise holding name BioCuba Pharma, a merge which allowed the transformation of this industry. But before going into this, I have to say that well, the, this is a picture of uh, the um, of the institute that was created in 1965, the first research center for advanced science in Cuba. And it, from here, the principal science leader from this big institute, the Genetic Engineering Biotechnology Institute, the immuno Molecular Immunology, the Finland Institute that produced vaccine, and many others, uh, were breeding this institution certainly participating in research and training in many countries in the world. And, uh, and this big, uh, uh, big uh, BioCo Pharma concern now has 38 enterprises, 22,000 employees, and 7,000 scientists and, and professional workers. So I was telling that in this, uh, this merge allowed the transformation of this industry into a new buoyant sector of the economic Based in knowledge, which currently uh, respons is responsible for this, I this in the second place of Cuban uh, issue, uh, Cuba uh, uh, bringing a hard currency for the country after nickel. So th the this is, uh, this sector of economy basic and knowledge will boost technology transfer, as you can see here in this slide. We have already transfer technology to China, to, to, to institutions, to, to Spain, Europe, the Basque country, for the unique production of, of, of medicine, pharmaceutical, and, and Brazil, among others. There are other examples. This will lead to the ex expansion of the country's access to the international market, including those of developed countries. It will also bring practical benefit in creation a new health service facility with higher productivity standards using top quality workers 
and to produce a new generation of, of drugs increasing the pharmaceutical for, for, for portfolio. We have three, four examples, Everprop, uh, P is a unique uh, uh, pharmaceutical in the world for the treatment of so-called diabetic f uh, food disease. Based in epidemic growth factor, it can uh, it can al it allows that already for all the trials and it has been applied for more than 140,000 people in, in in our country, in Venezuela, in other countries, not to cut, not to amputate the leg in uh, uh, almost 90 percent of the cases. Nimatuzumab is a, is a, is a uh, antibody monoclonal, humanicide antibody monoclonal that gives, that is for the treatment with other com combination of lung, throat cancers and other cancers. They are also going on some trials with prostate cancer and all type of cancer. The meningococcal vaccine was, was producing and is part of the of the of the vaccines, of the 11 vaccines that you will produce and are given freely to each child of the 13 need, 11 are produced in Cuba. And this system of ultra microanalytic system is, is for screening different uh, blood and other and diseases parameters. And it's spread over all over the country and exported for to more than 30 other countries. In this context, which role this context of, uh, of profound mention transformation, which role might play a, a new emerging technology su such as nanotechnology? If the buoyant Cuban biotechnology industry matured and was consolidated in around a quarter of a century under difficult conditions of economic crisis and external embargo that we call it blockade, it is expected that from an, ex an extensive use of research and innovation and the current creation of a new center of advanced science devoted to this subject, nanoscience and nanotechnology will also become an, a strategic asset of developing in the country. I'm not referring to the immediate future, but to the vision of creating today the necessary scientific, technical, and productive infrastructure and the effort that should be carried out today to achieve this goal. The current challenges with, will also, uh, with, uh, will also, with the recently passed foreign investment law, allow the creation of innovation centers and scientific parks, organizations that, as you know, are able to uh, in, in enhance the transformation of scientific achievement into industrialized, industrialized technological process. To bring together the academia and the business world and both to the demand of new products. It also facilitates the emergence of derivate companies such as startup and a spin-off, as you have an example in several uh, cities and part of, of your country. Nowadays, the future of mankind will also depend on, this, on its ability to develop an economy that will be not only efficient in the use of resources, but also socially inclusive. On the other hand, the creation of new knowledge and technical, technological changes occur at such a pace that we can remain permanently excluded if we don't have enough wisdom to understand, preserve, and increase them, as well as to the due determination to carry them out. In concluding, I would like to share with you the auditory the following thought of former President Fidel Castro Ruz expressed 52 years ago by when receiving an honorary degree in, in Russia, but with plenty actually nowadays. When social revolution stage has disappeared, then there will be an immense, enormous, infinite revolution to make, the revolution against the natural power which will never end. Science will success. Fidel Castro Ruz, 1963. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you, Dr. Fidel Castro Diaz Balag, for this wonderful exposition of Cuban perspective of modern science, innovative endeavors, and society. Uh, although we have a very short time, uh, Dr. Castro uh, will be happy to respond if there are one or two uh, questions. Uh, if you identify and uh, take the microphone. Yes, myself, uh, Umesh Prashad Singh. My discipline is English Literature, the University of Calcutta. My question to you is, sir, regarding curiosity, passion, and fascination, which you mentioned with respect to science as a driving force. With respect to Cuba, I want to know from you the, the attitude with respect to curiosity, passion and fascination, and also you mentioned with, uh, with passion about brain drain policy. Would you please elaborate these two contentions? Well, this, uh, what I said is certainly, uh, not only I was referring to Cuba, it's, it's, it's a, a, I think in a, in a distinguished auditory as, as we are now, many can also say why curiosity Fascination and passion is the main driving force for many of the scientific and pro other professionals that are involved in development of a new technology. Is in our country, as I said, I mentioned in in our presentation, my presentation, we had uh, 1.2 million of people that has a higher education. I don't say they, of this part they are not uh, uh, so large engagement of uh, in science and technology if we take together uh, uh, the, the science enterprise and universities and higher education and pedagogical and all, I think it's around a quarter of a million of persons. But many of the things that have been done indigenous and to, to confront many of the problems we have had, has this quality from the people who are professionally engaged in the field, and we, we can put many examples, not only with this one of high tech, but biotech, or in, in many cases, for example, we have 34 institutes, institute devoted to agriculture. It's very important for the food, uh, for the food security of our country. And many of the people who, was, who have been in, in, uh, doing research and development in this field have also do done it, overcoming a lot of difficulties due to the technology gap or to the uh, in inexistence of some kind of, of equipment. And they have done it and obtained very important results that many of them have been applied, and unfortunately others not. And that is one of the current challenges. But this ca characteristic to confront and to to develop science and technology, I think, is, is, a, is a kind of thing that is always present in, in any science and technology endeavor uh, that, that, that is meaningful for a country. Uh, concerning the brain drain, well, Cuba is, has been part of this since more than five decades. In the beginning of the revolution, the, the Cuba had 6,000 the doctors for six million uh, inhabitants, more or less. After two years, half of them went to the states. They were many. Some of them went because they wanted, and the other were given exceptional good circumstances to go. So after uh, 55 years, now we have we can say that in Cuba we have um, 15 faculties of uh, dealing with uh, medical. Uh, preparation and more than than 80,000 medical doctors. And that's why we can have currently around 35,000 in 60 countries of the world, helping other countries to, 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 to bridge the, the, the gap between not existing healthcare system, primary system. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's really a, a, a problem that is affecting Cuba also. Because uh, currently many of the, of the 
best prepared students that go abroad to do PhDs or to uh, when they are very skilled, they are given opportunities uh, to to study abroad, to 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 do postdocs or to work in, in good university, and certainly they do it ma mainly for economical or for reasons dealing with science development. So that is a challenge that we are confronting. We have been confronted it many years because the, our adversaries had tried to take us best engineer, best. That was in the beginning of the 60s also with, with the nickel industry. Our own engineers were the ones who put to, to, in work, to work the nickel industry because many of the, uh, the main engineers were from the states. They went back and they, but that is a, 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 an issue that we could continue talking about, but I think that it's better to give others the opportunity. Just have yeah. two more questions, you and uh, then Shiva. Yeah. Wonderful presentation, Dr. Uh, Castro. Uh -huh. I'm engineer Sharad Gupta, a freelancing electronics and telecom engineer associated in disaster management field. In the month of February, I was a speaker at Vigyan Bhavan. It was an international cancer conference. And uh, can, you, can you be brief? Yeah, yeah. I came to know that uh, according to WHO, Cuba is the only country who is working in the cancer field in biotechnology. So first of all, I want to compliment all of you, uh, the country Cuba. And uh, I would like, uh, through INSA, I would like some more details from you. Uh, wherever, whenever it is possible. And uh, I'm also associated with your Prensa Latina mm -hmm. uh, and uh, doing uh, social activities and cultural activities through uh, uh, India and Cuba. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. The, the only quotation of mine will be that Cuba is not the only country that is doing the research. In, in India also you're doing fine research in this, in this field and many other countries but mostly developed country. To put together this kind of, of, of uh, enterprise, of modern and high-tech enterprise in a, in a underdeveloped country without using venture capital from abroad, mainly all have been from the state-owned companies, it's, uh, it has been a big uh, uh, realization for our country. And, and certainly there's many there are some materials where it's more expressive than what in concrete they, they have been achieved in our portfolio. I can only tell you roughly that they, there are more than 50 products in the, and, and uh, around four times this of, of new, uh, in the pipeline of new, uh, new pharmaceuticals for the next years. So the, this is a very important effort and, and it has been uh, d directed mainly for the health care of the population, first of all, the Cuban population, that takes all this entirely free. And also, uh, with, they have a, a very strong platform for commercialization and e IP protection. We don't like it, but we have to compete in the world market with the big one, the big leaks. <laughs> so we have to be very skilled in this, and our engineers and scientists are. Yeah, good afternoon. This is Veronica Albuja from the UNESCO New Delhi office, natural science sector. Uh, regarding Cuba as a rich country in biodiversity, my question is, which are the current policies in Cuba that allow the country to develop the sustainable use of natural resources? And what is the role that scientific advances has played on that? Well, in in renewal, the effort has been done, have been mainly concerned with the uh, boosting the new renewable energies. We had in Cuba since many years ago a bio biomass from the sugar cane, and now we're improving in another field, also using biotech in, in the frame of agrobiotechnology, for example, to produce more productive. Uh, uh, soha that can be used in, in energy or other uses and at the same time we're putting uh, we have currently three 
three parts dealing with uh, with uh, the energy uh, wind energy and one part the uh, in solar energy and those are uh, distributed all around the country not only in one location so and consisting of other kind of things well they're doing some some work concerning the utilization of waste will be in the cities or the waste from different agro-biological agro products or whatsoever. So it's uh, an effort that has been done together with the so-called uh, uh, energetic revolution that was since the beginning of this century to, to improve efficiency in the use of electricity, also for cooking and for other means. and and besides having big power plant distributing toward m almost 2,000 places in Cuba, the energy, so you have vitality to confront the, the typhoons or the, the hurricanes that we have or other problems, disasters that can happen, and to guarantee the electricity to, to the population. And a lot of things has been done in the, in the environmental, there is a a mega project that is called is toward 2050, because Cuba, being a, a small island, like many others, uh, we have a, a big challenges with the climate change or or with the warming of the uh, world temperature. So I'm aware that a lot of you want to ask questions. But I should add that uh, uh, Dr. Castro has promised to be around for another 10 minutes to be informally interacting with the people. So you could ask him, because otherwise we are pressing for time. We are all aware that uh, after a 10 minute break, we have a UNESCO Kalinga Science Prize Award function in the same hall and all of you are invited. But before we break, we have most important uh, function of honoring uh, uh, Dr. Castro, and I will request uh, uh, Dr. Chidambaram to do the honor. So thank you all and uh, please assemble back in 10 minutes. Thank you.